Rick Tockett speaks out on the Canucks' struggles. Quinn Hughes sets another record, and this prospect is shocking everyone and drawing some big comparisons to an NHL All-Star. I'll get into this later on this episode. Before I start, to thousands of you watching that aren't subscribed, if you're enjoying this Canucks updates, just the prospect breakdowns, anything you can think of around the Canucks, make sure to go down, hit that subscribe button, never miss another episode. But with that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which is Rick Tockett speaks out on the struggles. So he did do an interview yesterday after the Canucks loss to the Capitals, and he just spoke on how this team has struggled. If I have to manufacture urgency right now at this time, we are in trouble, Tockett said, when he asked why his team couldn't muster the pushback necessary to stop the flow of momentum against Colorado in the third period and Wednesday, and then the Capitals in the second period last night. When you look at the Canucks, they've been outscored 6-1 over the past four periods and two seconds. This is the rest of the team that has netted just three points for the first three games of a nine-game homestand. And in each of the past two, at the first hint of adversity, the Canucks have wilted. So they've kind of struggled, and Tockett just really hammers down on this. They have to understand it's going to get harder and harder. It's the seal, right? They have to get past that seal. It's my job to help them break that seal. There's more in the tank. There's always more, and we've got to break through and find it. The big thing with this is, like I said, every time this Canucks team gets a lead and anything bad happens, they really start to crumble around each other. They haven't been able to just hold down these leads. They haven't looked the same, and there's a lot of players struggling around them. Right now, Taka once again appealed for more than a number of players. By now, the entire market knows that Elias Pettersson is at the top of the coach's list. There's no point in beating around the bush here. With 7 points since the last 13 games, Pedersen has been indifferent on far too many nights of late. But he's not the only one by any means, and Elias Lindholm has no goals and 2 assists in his past 13. Suter lone goal since the All-Star break was a 5th goal and a 5-0 win against the Winnipeg Jets a week ago. And everyone knows about Ilya Mikheyev's struggle since Christmas. Without Dakota Joshua, the depth has really just kind of crumbled. So when you do look at this, like I said... Lindholm is really struggling. The first game they got him, he scored two goals. It really looked good from the start. Since then, he hasn't been able to find his offensive game. Yes, he has been thrown around the lineup, but he hasn't been able to find a home to fit into this team. Yes, defensively, he has looked outstanding. I think defensively, he has been one of our best forwards, but he needs to find this offensive game, especially going into the playoffs. I do expect when uh, Dakota Joshua returns at the third line, will return the form. Maybe we see Dakota Joshua, maybe a guy like Lynn Holm in the middle, and Garland on the right. But as of right now, the bottom six has been struggling quite bad, and the top six hasn't been far off it. Yes, JT Miller has looked good. Yes, Besser has looked great as well. But Pedersen has been struggling a lot since getting his uh, extension. So what's your guys' thoughts on this? Are you starting to get worried that maybe the Canucks aren't ready for this kind of momentum going into the playoffs? Are you worried that a team like Vegas, if they do match up in the first round, is really going to pounce on them and maybe just take a few games before they can fight themselves back? Yes, the Canucks are dealing with injuries. Yes, Lindholm should get his offensive game back. Yes, Pedersen should turn things around. But at this very moment, they need to get this turned around. They have a huge homestand. They need to get this first place, win the President's Trophy, get home ice into the Stanley Cup Finals, and they need to ultimately make it there. They need to figure out how to get things to work. So like I said, are you guys worried? Do you think this is just kind of a rot in the road to the Stanley Cup Finals? Or are you really starting to get concerned and you think changes have to be done within this lineup? But with that, let's hop straight into the second topic today, which is kind of interesting if you ask me. Hughes makes history. Now, Quinn Hughes has set a new Canucks record for the most points, which is 77, in a season by a defenseman. You ask who was second place and who did he really knock out? The previous record was 76 set last year by none other than Quinn Hughes. Once again, Quinn Hughes has just been absolutely outstanding for this Canucks team. He's their top defenseman. He's their franchise defenseman for a reason. We wonder why Hironik's looking at such a big extension is because he plays with someone like Quinn Hughes that elevates everyone's game around him. In my opinion, Quinn Hughes is going to break this record again probably next year, the year after, the year after that. I think it's pretty safe to say that Quinn Hughes will hold this record for quite some time, and I don't think he's done breaking it. I just thought this was kind of funny that we're just going to continuously see him just have this kind of meme of 
breaking his old record year after year. But, I mean, what do you expect? This is our franchise defenseman, and he has looked outstanding. But talking about franchise defenseman, I wanted to talk about a rookie defenseman and a prospect is Tom Willander in presses. Now, when you do look at Tom Willander, he is playing in the NCAA. Tom Willander, a plus 24 on the season, is an all-star. He does make it with a couple of his teammates into the oh, with Boston, where he does make the all-star game. But when you do look at this, there's a quite a few interesting stats, and this is the big one that I do want to bring up. NCAA defenseman points per game in their D plus one year, so the first year of division hockey, NCAA hockey, whatever you want to say. Charlie McAvoy, 0.68 points per game. Tom Willander, 0.66 points per game. None other than Kale McCarr, 0.62 points per game, and Brock Faber with 0.44 points per game. Also, like getting a lot less power play time than these guys. I mean, if you look at this list, everyone knows who these guys are. Faber right now is having an incredible season for the Minnesota Wild. Charlie McAvoy is the top defenseman on the Boston Bruins. And you see a guy like Kale McCarr, who is currently the best defenseman in the entire National Hockey League. This guy has looked outstanding since coming over from Sweden, playing on North American ice, and it's just a matter of time before he gets into this Canucks organization, and he might be the franchise right-handed defenseman the Canucks have been kind of looking for. I mean, I just kind of think about the situation of Hughes, then you put in a guy like Will Ender next to him, you still have guys like Carson Soucy, Horonic. This decor is going to be ex uh, quite good, and especially with guys like Elias Pettersson, who just made their ways to Abbotsford. Now, when you do look at Tom Willander, just in case you don't really know much about him, or if you missed one of my videos about him, right now he is 19 years old from Stockholm, Sweden. He was drafted by the Canucks in 2023 as the 11th overall pick. He's six foot one, 179 pounds. You can see in the bottom he has a couple awards from just playing in the NCAA, or sorry, in playing overseas, playing in the World Juniors. This guy has quite a few awards for just being 19. Now, when you do look at him, Willander's value stems from the combination of high-end skating and motor. He's always engaged defensively, using his dynamic posure and excessive footwork to guide attackers away from the middle and break up plays among the boards. When you add the fact that he's both strong and skilled physically and relentlessly completes for every puck, He's a nightmare to play against. Even if you start to manage to gain an advantage, Willner has the quickness to recover most of the time. And this was on Elite Prospects 2023 NHL Draft Guide. And this is the big reason why the Canucks draft him 11th overall. Now, when you do a look at Tom Willner, like I said, he is playing on Boston University. In 33 games played, he has four goals, 18 assists for 22 points. He's a plus 24, and he made the All-Star game there currently in the playoffs as well. And I do want to compare him to a guy like Kale McCarr. Yes, they might be a different style player where a guy like Willener might be a bit better defensively at this age. But when you do look at points per game for the comparables on these guys, in 34 games played for Kale McCarr in his first year of Division I hockey and CAA hockey, he had five goals, 16 assists for 21 points, which Willander right now is kind of beating out when you look at the records-wise or the stats-wise, I should say. So this guy has the potential. I don't think it's going to be this year. Maybe next year if they decide to kind of rush him, if he impresses in training camp, if he looks good in development camp. But right now, they look like they have a future top four defenseman just building his seasons up in the NCAA. We're going to see a huge jump from this guy in the NCAA. Maybe he makes Abbotsford within the next year or two, and then ultimately makes the Canucks in year three, maybe even year two, depending on how he continues. This is a guy that's going to be great defensively while still being able to put up points. 6-1, he can still grow a tiny bit, and I think the potential is quite high on this guy. I definitely recommend checking out Boston's playoff games. I think they're into game one right now, but as of right now, he looks like an absolute stud. He looks like an all-star because he is an all-star in the NCAA. So what's your thoughts on Tom Willander? Do you think he's going to be a top four defenseman? Are you hoping he's going to end up becoming the best defenseman? Maybe even pass this guy like Quinn Hughes. And what's your thoughts on the lines? Are you starting to panic? Are you not worried? Are you worried that Mark Messier maybe uh, jinxed this team because he did come out and speak on the team? just before they went into their slide. But that'd be it for this episode of Connect Digest. Like I said, if you enjoyed this, make sure to go down, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, uh, share this with your friends. If you don't want to subscribe, that's fine too. Hopefully you stumble upon another video and decide to subscribe. But with that, that'd be it for this.